Being a professional archaeologist means that you have a better chance of identifying an ancient artifact or structure than the average person in the street. However, it's by no means a guarantee that you'll always understand the discoveries you make. There have been many discoveries that experts only understand in part, or in some cases, not at all. We always enjoy looking at these mysterious discoveries, so let's do that together now. Have archaeologists found the location of the Last Supper? Some of them certainly think so. This 2,000-year-old ritual bath, known as a mikveh, was discovered close to the Garden of Gethsemane in December of 2020. Fittingly, the discovery was made very close to Christmas. A statement from the Israel Antiquities Authority confirmed the finding and also confirmed the discovery of the remains of a 1,500-year-old Byzantine-era church at the same site at the foot of the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. This is the first direct archaeological evidence of human activity at Gethsemane during the time of Christ. There appears to be an oil press in the area too, which would corroborate some of the stories told in the New Testament. The bath would have been used by workers before starting a day's work in accordance with the Jewish laws of purification that existed at the time. There have been numerous archaeological excavations at the site since 1919, but somehow the ritual bath has evaded detection until now. It isn't concrete proof that the Last Supper happened here, but it might be as close as we ever get. It takes a leap of faith to believe the veracity of this next find, but let's look at the facts and see if we can reach any conclusions. It's an aluminum object and it's around 250,000 years old. That's a big problem for archaeologists and historians because humans didn't start producing aluminum until about 200 years ago. With that in mind, it isn't surprising that some people believe it might be a piece of an alien spaceship. It was found in Romania during the country's communist era in 1973, but was considered such a controversial find that its existence didn't become public knowledge until several decades later. The purpose of the object is unknown, but it's unquestionably human-made. Putting the UFO theory aside, some experts have speculated that it might be part of an axe. There are 12 different metals present in the artifact, but aluminum constitutes 90% of it. An alternative set of tests carried out in Switzerland in recent years have suggested that it's only around 8,000 years old. That's more plausible in terms of the human factor, but still doesn't explain how it could have been made from aluminum. The oracle figure known as Kaffa Gilejo is currently held in the collection of the Met Museum in New York, USA. The question of what it's supposed to represent, beyond its vaguely humanoid shape, is unresolved, as is the question of its age. It's thought to be a product of the Sanufo people. Some people who've examined it in person say that it gave them a sense of anxiety that they were unable to explain. Kaffa Gilejo translates into English as he who speaks the truth. It might be a representation of the invisible bush spirits that the Sanufo believe in, and modern-day Sanufo say that it might have been used in trials to determine when someone is lying. They say that only the most senior male or female of a tribe would have been allowed to own it, and even then, it wouldn't have been on display in their homes. It was most likely created in the Ivory Coast and most likely about 200 years old but neither of those facts is certain either. We'll ask you to suspend your sense of disbelief yet again for this next discovery. Allegedly, this is the skeleton of a giant human that was found inside Thailand's Krabby Cave in May 2020. To those who believe that the skeleton is real, it's evidence that the legend of the Nagas, a race of serpent people who were said to have lived in Thailand in the distant past, and are also mentioned in Hindu mythology, is real. The skeleton is 16 feet long and was found wrapped in the remains of an equally giant serpent. The find looks pretty convincing, so why haven't we heard more about it? The answer to that is that the skeleton is just a little too perfect. It's fully intact, which is almost never true of skeletons that are thousands of years old, and it looks too clean. The circumstances of its discovery are also a little too convenient to be plausible. The Krabby Cave has been searched many times by archaeologists over the years, 
and one of them would surely have noticed a giant skeleton laying on the ground in plain sight. We have to conclude that this is more likely to be a hoax than a genuine giant. But it's a very well executed one. This next find is no less shocking than the giant skeleton, but this time it comes with much more solid scientific evidence. Experts now agree that these 3.7 million year old footprints in Tanzania, which were long thought to have been made by bears, were actually made by early humans. The prints were found by paleontologist Mary Leakey between 1976 and 1978 at a site in Laetoli, but were misunderstood and therefore mislabeled. We now think that they're the oldest direct evidence of humans walking upright in the world. The species that created them is likely to have been Australopithecus afarensis, the same species that the world-famous skeleton known as Lucy belongs to. How they came to be viewed as bear prints in the first place is unknown. Bears have wide feet that taper at the toes, whereas human feet are more squared off and have prominent big toes. Both of those traits can clearly be seen in the prints. Chimpanzee prints can also give the same appearance, but don't have the wide heels we see here. It's no exaggeration to say that these footprints have changed our understanding of human history. The amount of information we know for sure about the Picts who lived in Scotland thousands of years ago is pitiful. They left behind no written language, and most of the information we have about them comes from the biased records of the Romans who saw them as little more than savages. Artifacts like Sueno's stone proves that they were a little more sophisticated than that. It's the largest of all the surviving Pictish cross slab stones in the country standing an impressive 21 feet tall. Archaeologists believe that it was erected somewhere between the years 850 and 900, but the questions of who erected it and why remain unresolved. The decorations on its surface include a scene that might depict a royal inauguration, but it's so badly weathered that it's impossible to be sure. The battle scene on the east face is far easier to see but whether it's a scene of a real battle or an imagined one is unknown. There are other battle scenes on other panels, so it might be a war memorial as opposed to anything connected with Pictish royalty. Whatever it might be, it's certainly not the work of savages. Hadrian's Wall is one of the most famous of all the Roman creations in the British Isles, but it's often misinterpreted as one continuous wall. It isn't. Instead, it's made up of many smaller walls and bridges, one of which is the Willowford Roman Bridge on the east bank of the River Irthing in Cumbria. It was long thought to be a fairly unimportant bridge, but in recent years that interpretation has changed. Archaeologists now think that the bridge, which was built in the year 122, carried Hadrian's Wall across the river. Rather than being a basic footbridge for Roman soldiers to cross the river, which no longer runs through the area, it instead supported the entire weight of the wall. There isn't much of it left today save for the foundations and the base of a tower that once formed part of the bridge. The stone dovetails and bar cramps to bond the bridge's stonework together are especially fascinating to archaeologists, as they display a complexity and technique that would go on to be used by fine furniture makers hundreds of years later. It's yet another example of the Romans being way ahead of their time. The capabilities of our ancient ancestors were, for the most part, much greater than we often give them credit for. You can see proof of that in this 7,500-year-old rock drill, which was discovered in Turkey's Bursa province in May 2019. The tool was found inside a tomb. Archaeologists aren't sure whether it was used in the tomb's construction or whether it was important to the person buried in it. Humans are thought to have first arrived in the area around 1,000 years before the tool was made. The pointed flint stone has been compared to modern-day drill bits, which suggests that the people who lived in and around the Actopraclic settlement mound all that time ago were expert builders. Decorative stone beads found elsewhere in the tomb were probably drilled by the tool, 
There have been archaeological excavations ongoing here since 2004, with the best of the discoveries exhibited within the Actopraclic Settlement Mound Archaeopark and Open Air Museum for visitors. Needless to say, this rock drill now has a special place of its own within the museum. For hundreds of years, our next discovery has guided the many caravans and wagon trains that have crossed the Andes. It's the archaeological rock art site known as Crucis de Molinos in Chile, which is covered in depictions of humans, camelids, and exotic birds. The site is in the middle of a route that was well-traveled by merchants between the 10th century and the 15th before the arrival of the Incas. There are more than 60 engraved blocks here featuring artwork separated into 27 panels. The grooves and furrows of the wagons and carriages that pass through the Crucis de Molinos are still visible in the ground. Some of the artwork has been interpreted as directions and other examples might contain information that was pertinent to the travelers. The area might also have had religious significance. Some of the discoveries that have been made here, buried in the hard ground, are thought to be offerings to the goddess Pachamama, a mighty deity who is said to have power over the earth, fertility, and time itself. Unfortunately, the site doesn't have any protection and is in danger of being totally worn away in years to come. There are those who say that St. Kilda is the eeriest island in the world. It's the most remote of all the British Isles, far from mainland Scotland, and containing little more than a ghost town surrounded on all sides by the ocean. Anyone who lived here would exist in a state of near-total isolation, which is probably why no one does anymore. The last of its occupants elected to move to Scotland in the 1930s after living in these difficult conditions simply became unsustainable after the collapse of the fishing industry. Plenty of people lived here in the past, though, and they built these little stone huts for shelter. They're known as Cletian, made from dry stone walls with a stone slab for a roof, then a cap of turf to stop the rain from getting in. Despite that element of protection, they also seem to have been built so the wind can travel through them which would surely have made them extremely cold and more than a little impractical to live in. Conventional homes were later built on the island, and the matter of who built the Cletian and why became information that was lost to time. There may be no collection of rock carvings in the world more incredible than the Dazu rock carvings of Chongqing, China. The site contains thousands of stone carvings, most of which are inspired by religion. We're not talking about an individual religion, though. The carvings here contain works inspired by Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism. Putting a date on a stone artifact is never easy, but most historians believe that the oldest of the carvings were made in the 7th century. In comparison, the most recent is around 500 years younger than that. The work seems to have been stopped very suddenly, and nobody knows why. Another big mystery about the site is why the Chinese government kept the existence of the site a secret, unknown even to their own people until the 1960s. They eventually decided to open it up to domestic tourists that decade and then allowed foreign tourists to come and take a look at the artwork 20 years after that. Aside from the religious idols, there are also carvings here which represent ancient Chinese people going about their daily lives which makes Dazu an invaluable historical record. A major archaeological dig began at the Zerzavan Castle in Diyakabir, Turkey, in the summer of 2021. The objective of the archaeologists at the site is to find relics and artifacts from the country's Roman era. And they found a few of those already, but the Roman finds aren't the most remarkable thing they found at the site. That honor goes to this tiny seal. It's the Great Seal of the United States of America and dates back to the USA's earliest days as a country independent from British rule. The placement of the seal is extremely strange. It was found close to the 3,000-year-old castle's eastern wall in an archaeological layer that's supposedly 2,000 years old. But the seal is from the year 1782. It bears the motto E Pluribus Unum, 
a Latin phrase that translates into English as from multiplicity to unity. This was the first national motto of the USA. The seal is in relatively good condition and still clearly shows 13 stars to represent the 13 former colonies that make up the newly independent country. Archaeologists have no idea how it ended up here. The only theory they've come up with so far is that someone deliberately buried it two centuries ago as a practical joke, knowing that archaeologists would eventually find it and be confused.